uh, pass to the next speaker. Thank you very much, Mingyu. Yeah, thank you. So, our next speaker is Xinyu Dang. He's an associate professor uh, in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering in the University of California, San Diego. Prior to joining UC San Diego in 2017, he was an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and received his PhD degree from the University of Michigan in 2012. His research interest lies in wireless systems and ubiquitous computing, and more specifically in designing next generation wireless architecture and physical layer informed protocols. Designing ubiquitous systems that leverage uh, wireless signals to sense micro location and micro activities at near vision precision. His research work regularly appears in top conference in these areas, especially ACM, Mobico, Mobisys, SIGCOM, and and others, and is the recipient of two ACM Mobicon Best Paper Awards, Communication of ACM Research Highlight, ACM SIG Mobile Research Highlight, NSF Career Award, Google Research Award, and Sony Research Award. He served as the TPC Chair for ACM Mobicom 2019, SECON 2017, and co-chair of NSF Millimeter Wave Research Coordination Network, Associate Editor for IEEE Transactions on Mobile Computing. Xinyu, the floor is yours. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much for the introduction. It's my pleasure to present our recent work on realizing seamless millimeter wave networking for 5G and beyond. We all know that uh, millimeter wave networking is a cornerstone technology for the coming mobile broadband, including 5G and beyond, and also next generation of local area network technologies such as either general AD, AY, and so on. Millimeter wave uh, has long uh, been questioned because of its high attenuation loss and a shorter wavelength. Um, and uh, it's hard to use millimeter wave to realize pervasive coverage. Um, and uh, this problem becomes more severe if we consider the fact that uh, millimeter wave radios are using highly directional phase rate antennas to form directional links. These directional links may partially compensate for the tension, attenuation loss, but unfortunately, they also introduce some new challenges. And in particular, mobility and blockage are two major challenges. Whenever the transmitter or receiver move, they have to realign their beams to make sure the link is maintained. And also, whenever there is some blockage, either mobile blockage or stationary obstacles, then the transmitter and the receiver again have to realign their beams, potentially by re-steering the beam towards another reflector to form a detour path. And uh, when we consider a mobile a dynamic scenario with a lot of such um, mobile obstacles or device mobility, then this kind of uh, beam switch and become a major challenge. And because of such troublesome problems for a long time, the use cases of millimeter wave networking have been limited to quite constrained settings, short range point to point settings, uh, such as uh, cable replacement, wireless backhaul, and uh, fixed wireless access. And of course, our ambition shouldn't be limited to such. In 5G and beyond, there are a lot of uh, powerful use cases people are imagining, such as using millimeter wave to realize dynamic gigabps mesh backhaul, uh, and uh, using millimeter wave to establish context sharing between vehicles in the intelligent transportation system, and uh, also using millimeter wave to realize ultra high definition mobile virtual reality, or using it to realize 3D tele uh, teleportation or holoportation applications, which all require high bandwidth and also require some, some level of mobility. So the grand challenge for millimeter wave is, uh, can we make it as seamless as the Wi-Fi or LTE that we are currently using on a daily basis. Theoretically, we can, although there's the high attenuation loss due to shorter wavelength, but uh, people already know that uh, by using large phase rate antennas, we can have very high attenuation, uh, high directionality gain, which compensate for the attenuation loss. 
On the other hand, although directionality uh, makes it hard to have multi-path reflections and uh, create a lot of uh, blind spot areas, but if we can switch the directional beam in a very efficient and fast manner, then we can approximate an omnidirectional coverage that is as good as Wi-Fi or LTE. To approach this theoretical ideal, of course, there's a lot of practical challenges. First of all, we have to ensure that the millimeter wave link is uh, very robust under blockage, either dynamic or static obstacle blockage. We have to realize pervasive coverage, omnidirectional, blind spot free. We also have to make sure that uh, millimeter wave can accommodate high mobility scenarios such as V2X connectivity. In the past few years, we have, uh, uh, my research team has been working on solving all of these challenges. Our first step was to build an experimental testbed to support experimental research in millimeter wave networking and sensing. Then we explored several broad directions to address the challenges that I just mentioned. That is uh, to realize robust millimeter wave networking under blockage. In particular, we explored several mechanisms that use various sensors to assist millimeter wave networking and make it robust. We have also explored solutions to realize omnidirectional coverage and remove the blind spot areas. We have also investigate, investigated the feasibility and the challenges in realizing millimeter wave under the V2X scenarios. In this talk, I will briefly introduce our efforts along each of these broader directions. When we started this area back in 2013, the millimeter wave isn't so uh, mature yet, um, especially because there's not uh, an experimental platform that we can use for system implementation and uh, validation. So the first step that we did is to build a platform by ourselves. We built a millimeter wave software radio platform called WIMI um, and uh, used it to conduct the first measurement study of millimeter wave networks in indoor environment. WIMI used the directional horn antenna to emulate the directional beam forming in a commercial phase array antenna. And later, we further developed our own phase array antennas, although it's a very rudimentary prototype with only four antenna elements. More recently, uh, we built uh, M-Cube, a millimeter wave MIMO software radio platform. This software radio platform has a massive number of antenna elements, 256 antenna elements and it allows programmability at both the physical layer and the phase array front end. Uh, the, this was enabled uh, through a new novel radio architecture that transforms the commercial millimeter wave radio into a fully programmable millimeter wave MIMO software radio. This platform development was, uh, has been supported by National Science Foundation CCRI program, and uh, it's a community research infrastructure. Um, our goal is to um, use this platform to enable research in millimeter wave sensing and uh, communication. And in the past year, we have delivered the replicas of MCube to quite a few research institutions to support their research. Based on this experimental test bed, we have also conducted our own research to enable seamless millimeter wave networking. The first broad direction that we explored is to solve the robustness problem. Um, we came up with a general design principle to enable seamless millimeter wave networking uh, to overcome the robustness challenge. Our basic rationale is that uh, we all know millimeter wave is a uh, millimeter wave network performance is a very sensitive function of motion or location and uh, environment. And uh, because of this, if we can model this sensitive function, 
then we can better control and optimize the minimum tidal wave network performance. Based on this principle, we have uh, explored various ways of uh, optimizing minimum tidal wave performance. For example, in this system called the IMI, we use minimum tidal wave radios themselves as sensors to construct an abstract view of the ambient environment. And given the environmental information, we can predict the minimum tidal wave network performance through a simple ray tracing model. This figure is showing the process of constructing the environment of a simple office area. And uh, um, that area includes both specular and the diffusive reflectors, just like a typical radio environment. Given such environmental information, we can predict if we place the millimeter wave base station or access point at specific locations, what will be the network performance in terms of throughput robustness to blockage and so on. We found that using our prediction approach, we can optimize the network performance and improve the throughput by two to five times and further making the network much more robust under random blockage. The second approach we explored is the, to use motion sensors to facilitate seamless millimeter wave networking to make it more robust. Um, in practical millimeter wave environment, we often have uh, multiple base stations or access points serving the same client. And uh, whenever the client moves to a different direction, a different access point can be selected. But uh, this selection of access point plus the selection of directional beams makes the problem very complicated. We found that uh, Using the ubiquitous motion sensors on mobile client devices, we can actually guide the selection of the access points as well as the beams and minimize the interferences between concurrent links. A third approach that we explored based on the principle is uh, using Wi Fi, using the co located Wi Fi or another low frequency radio interface as a sensor as well as the backup communication channel. We found that we can use Wi-Fi to sense the channel and use the sensing result to facilitate the millimeter wave beam management as well as uh, switching between, uh, making decisions uh, of uh, switching between the high frequency millimeter wave and low frequency interface. Using this approach, we can substantially improve the network throughput and uh, reduce the switch latency between these two interfaces by orders of magnitude. More recently, um, inspired by the fact that uh, on modern mobile devices such as iPhone, the, uh, there are already emerging mobile LiDAR in, uh, within these mobile devices. So we can actually use the mobile LiDAR to map the environment and guide the millimeter wave beam management or beam selection. Of course, the environment from the LIDAR's perspective is different from the environment from the millimeter wave radio's perspective. So we came up with an entire framework to refine the environment model from the radar and map it to the millimeter wave environment so that we can guide the millimeter wave beam selection, interference management, and so on. This again has uh, shown to be uh, improving the network performance and the robustness a lot. Another major challenge for millimeter wave is the coverage problem. Because of the use of phased arrays, each millimeter wave radio usually only has a very limited field of view, usually limited below 90 degrees. But ideally, we want an omnidirectional coverage, just like Wi-Fi or LTE. The basic idea to overcome this challenge is just to put multiple phase rays together on the same radio to form an array of phase rays. And this will naturally give us 360 coverage, 360 field of view. More importantly, 
this will provide more multipath diversity to help us eliminate many of the blind spot areas. Of course, uh, this is not as straightforward as just uh, assembling multiple phase rays. We have to come up with the corresponding solutions to manage the phase rays, to select the different phase rays, as well as the individual beams on each phase ray. Our solution um, is the entire system-oriented framework, including algorithm design and implementation. We built a prototype system to validate this uh, um, omnidirectional millimeter wave design. Uh, this figure, the heat maps, um, is, uh, they are showing the coverage improvement using our system. The two array case uh, on the um, middle of this slide, as you can see, um, shows um, um, some blind spot areas, in, in particular in a bedroom within the entire room area. There is a blind spot area with very low throughput. But if we use four or eight arrays combined with our beam management design, we can see that uh, the blind spot area is almost entirely removed. We are essentially realizing seamless coverage within this area. Besides coverage, another problem and another question people ask about millimeter wave is uh, can it really support high mobility? And the beam switching seems to be quite cumbersome. Can you really make sure that the beam can keep track of the moving vehicles at high speed? To answer this question, we deployed the millimeter wave V2X testbed on the UCSD campus. Um, where we mount millimeter wave base stations on light poles. And these uh, base stations are powered by solar panel, which is uh, usable at least in Southern California area with a lot of sunlight. Of course, we also have backup batteries for night use. Besides this, we also uh, built a large scale 3D ray chasing engine to complement the test bed so that we can evaluate the millimeter wave V2X at large scale. This uh, um, 3D ray chasing engine essentially is a digital twin version of the test bed. Uh, we are loading the 3D model of the UCSD campus into the ray chasing simulator so that we can realistically match the digital simulation with the test bed measurement. There are many results from this measurement campaign, but uh, um, uh, brief, to briefly summarize, the results are mostly positive. We found that even if we just use some rudimentary beam search methods, millimeter wave V2X can still work reasonably well, especially because the V2X channel is a highly structured channel in the geometrical space. There can be blockage problems, for example, due to co-located chucks but this blockage can largely be overcome if we have a simple mechanisms such as just the mounting the base stations higher. And also we can realize very simple spatial multiplexing in millimeter wave V2X by either using MIMO or by just uh, directly uh, uh, scheduling the directional beams so that they are working in parallel in space without interfering with each other. To briefly summarize, millimeter wave is a very promising technology, especially because it overcomes the spectrum's crunch at the low frequency band. However, the problem of uh, seamless millimeter wave networking remains a grand challenge. Um, in the past few years, um, our research has uh, explored ways of uh, approaching the vision of seamless millimeter wave coverage, millimeter wave networking by using a sensor-assisted networking mechanism to make the millimeter wave networks more robust by realizing omnidirectional coverage and also by verifying the feasibility and identifying the challenges of millimeter wave under high mobility V2X scenarios. For more information about all of these works, feel free to check our recent publications. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.
much Xinyu for this very interesting talk. And we have we're a little bit over time, but we might have time for one quick question from the audience. Let's see if there is some question. In the meantime, I have one. So you have considered um, mobility and as a roadblock to the adoption of the millimeter waves with the problems with if there is a blockage, you need to perform a realignment and you showed very good solution in terms of uh, network performance, a reduction of blockage probability. Uh, and other problems that uh that is very common in this when when it comes to handheld devices is the power consumption and i believe yeah. it can have a very good impact on the power consumption mm -hmm. can you maybe elaborate a little bit quickly of your vision if you have considered if you plan on considering it as a kpi mm -hmm. Thanks. yes uh we haven't looked into the power consumption yet there has been research uh, research studies showing that uh, the energy per bit of millimeter wave can actually be lower compared with the low frequency devices, mainly because of the high throughput. Of course, this will require proper network management solutions, such as sleep scheduling and so on. Um, I think uh, uh, there's still a lot to be done in, in this domain in, in terms of power consumption. Thanks a lot. Yeah, there is a lot of potential. And there is another question. Uh... Do you see any other technology besides LiDAR or Wi-Fi that you feel might be combined with millimeter wave to help with some of these problems? Um, yes, I, I think um, uh, besides the uh, Wi-Fi and the LiDAR, uh, motion sensor, of course, is another technology that uh, we can explore to complement millimeter wave. Um, I, I think there could be other sensors. Um, I, I have uh, We have seen some uh, uh, other research works that use, for example, just a normal lighting as the indication of uh, the millimeter wave, uh, millimeter wave directionality to uh, guide the beam alignment. Uh, I think uh, uh, if we brainstorm, there could be a lot of alternative ways of facilitating the millimeter wave, uh, millimeter wave links. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sinyo, for the Thank for you. your time and for your for your talk. Thank so you. this concludes. Thank you.